Welcome to Grow and Give, a modern victory garden project from Colorado State University Extension. We're here to help you learn to grow food, to share with your family, your friends, your neighbors, and your community. Melons, a sweet summer treat. Melons are an easy crop to grow, but there are a few things that go into making it a successful planting. They like rich, well-drained soil. So amend the area with a couple of inches of well-rotted manure or fully decomposed compost before you start building the hills. Take some granular fertilizer and mix it into the area about four inches deep. Then plan to mulch the area once the seedlings are up and growing and the ground has warmed. Mulching will keep weeds down and competition few to these expanding vines. Mulch that can be used can be something as simple as straw or black plastic. Black plastic will keep the ground warm and then eventually the vine leaves will cover it to cool things off. If you're going to use black plastic, make sure you set your irrigation up underneath it. The location for melons need to be in full sun out of the wind and give these vining plants plenty of room to grow. These are a warm season crop, so daytime temperatures must be above 55 degrees consistently and the soil temperature plays a big role. Soil temps should be at least 75 degrees. So measure your soil temperatures before you start planting those hills in May in Colorado. Direct sow, that means plant the seeds directly into the ground. Although people do like to start them indoors, melons don't like their roots disturbed. So if you are going to start the seeds indoors, get them planted into the ground just as soon as the seedlings emerge or have one or two sets of true leaves. You definitely don't want to let these plants grow to be any good size in a pot before planting them out. When you do plant them out, make sure that you uh, disturb the roots as little as possible. For direct sowing, which is the recommended method, plant five or six seeds together in hills that are four to six feet apart. Cover these with an inch of soil. After the seeds germinate, thin each hill to the two or three strongest seedlings. Water the young seedlings consistently, making sure they don't dry out. Then as the plants get larger and the vines shade the ground, you can plan on about an inch to an inch and a half of water once weekly in a deep irrigation and that it should be enough for the melons. Drip irrigation is best. Keep the area weeded, but as you're moving around in there, don't disturb the vines. Melons will grow and then suddenly the vines will run. This means they elongate very, very quickly before they start setting a lot of flowers and fruit. It takes room to grow melons, Although we do have some that stay fairly petite, most of them need at least four to six feet of room to grow. The vines don't like disturbance, so if they are in a windy area, they would benefit from being held down so they can't rock or be tossed by the wind. The U-shaped earth pins are fantastic for this, gently placed over the vines and not down and crushing them to the ground. If you prefer to trellis your melons, and they do well growing up, understand that the vines will not hold with enough strength to keep the vines on the trellis once the fruit starts getting bigger and heavier. It helps to use a soft cloth tie to keep the vines attached to the trellis. Then as the fruit forms and begins to grow, it's really recommended that you give the fruit a little support in as it sizes up. This means putting a sling under it. Hammocking them is a good way to think about it. And it can be made from old pantyhose, mesh netting, whatever will support the fruit as it gets larger and larger so it doesn't tug the vine off of the trellis. 
If the melons are growing on the ground, then it is a good idea to slip something under them to avoid having them in contact with the soil itself. There are a lot of different organisms in soil that can um, attack the developing fruit, causing it to have a little ground rot or perhaps some insects or worms would nibble on the outer rind. Instead, protect them. You can slide a little piece of tile underneath there, a board underneath the, the developing fruit, something to get it up off of the ground. There are a number of delicious melons around, but I'd like to focus on a few that grow very well in Colorado. Musk melons, charentaise, galeas, and ananas are all similar in that they have this quirky mesh netting that grows on the outside of the rind. They might have ribbing. They all have a distinct perfume when they're ripening. So you'll be able to tell out in the garden when things are getting close to harvest. They have a soft flesh and a relatively short shelf life. Ananas is the pickiest of all. They ripen incredibly fast and they have a short shelf life. You gotta eat them pretty quickly. Ananas is one that you wanna check on a daily basis. In the muskmelon, charentaise, galea, and ananas types, they have the ability to tell you when they're ready to harvest. These will slip from the vine. Slip stage is the term used when the melon is ripe it's easily slipping from the stem itself. Most melons will ripen up and the, the skin will change color a little bit underneath that corky mesh that's on the outside. They'll have that distinctive perfume and you can smell that they're ripening. But the most significant clue to look for is looking where the stem attaches to the fruit itself. Right at that stem, it will start to separate. And as soon as the separation is about two thirds of the way, all the way around where the stem attaches, that's considered slip stage. The melon easily is pulled off the vine at that point, and that's when you harvest it. Watermelons and honeydew are included here together because it's really difficult to tell when they're ripe out in the garden. Honeydew has a smooth, thick rind that's usually green, yellow, or white. Watermelons can come in a variety of different colors, light green, dark green, striped, light and dark green, or they can have some spots and spangles on them like the cultivar moon and stars. It's important to note that these melons don't ripen further once they've been harvested from the vine. Instead, they need to be left there until they're fully ripe. Honeydews really don't give you any indication when they're ripe. However, a watermelon does have a couple of signs to look for. Ripe. They'll tell you in two different ways. One is that the, um, the belly, the part of the melon that is resting on the ground will change color. Typically, it develops a little bit of a yellow or a tan coloration. Also, you'll notice that the tendrils that are really close to the fruit itself will dry back. If you're looking for visual clues, then this is how you tell that a watermelon is ripe. But honeydews don't do this. And if you're not sure about the watermelon either, the one surefire way is to count the days from when the flower closes and the fruit begins to size up. Roughly 40 days after that flower has closed, your melon is ripe. So pick your honeydew and your watermelons at that time. There are some other melon types that is worthwhile considering for your backyard garden. Crenshaw, Canary, tropical or winter melons are all delicious and they each bring unique characteristics to the table. These need a little bit of a longer growing season. They need at least 110 days. So it's worthwhile to start the seeds indoors, but get them planted out gently without uh, disturbing the roots 
and then let them grow in a nice sunny location. The rind will change color most often on these, so check the seed packet for what color the melon will become when it's ripe. Winter melons are those that will store very well into the fall. These are also referred to as Santa Claus melons. There's a photo here of one of those types, Piel de Sapo, which is an outstanding honeydew flavored melon that you would enjoy. Most of the time, these are non-slip melons. In other words, they don't tug easily from the vine. You usually have to cut them when they're ripe. The forced slip types with the Crenshaw means that it's similar to a musk melon in that it will separate, but it takes a little bit harder tug on the vine to get them to loosen. It's better to just cut these from the vine rather than pull. Grow food, give locally, support your community. Contact your local CSU Extension office.